All right. Good morning, everyone. It is time to kick off another Friday Photography Masterclass. Welcome, everyone. My name is Terry White, Worldwide Photography Evangelist here at Adobe. It's my pleasure to be streaming to you once again live from the beautiful Atlanta. And we're going to um, kick off some things in Photoshop in just a moment here. I just want to make sure I am, in fact, live everywhere I said I would be live. Just give me a second to check. And, yep, it's live there. Awesome. It's live. Should be live here if I refresh. Good morning, Bruce. Good morning, uh, Nicholas. Good morning, Steve. And for those of you who are new, if this is your first time joining the Masterclass uh, series here at Adobe Live, welcome. If you're watching this on another channel like YouTube or Facebook or um, Twitter or whatever it is you may be watching this on, uh, great to have you here as well. Uh, note that um, while it's great that I see all the people watching on my YouTube channel and the Adobe Creative Cloud YouTube channel and Facebook like Jesse and, and uh, is it Elgin Ajaran? I can't pronounce your name, but anyway, great to see you all there on the very, on the, all the various channels. But keep in mind that uh, I can't look at all the chats. There would be like six or seven chat windows I would have to look at to keep up with all your comments. So with that in mind, if you want me to see a question or a comment, head over to b.net slash Adobe Live. And that way, you will that's the one chat I will be looking at because that is the official channel for this particular live stream. Uh, if you head over there, you can sign in with your Adobe ID, which is free to create if you don't already have one. Um, and then you can, um, I'll be looking at that chat and I see Monica and Murray and Mike and Sam and Steve and all the people that are there right now. And that's the chat that I'll be monitoring for questions and comments, opinions and feelings uh, throughout this live stream. So thanks for watching on the channels. Thanks for watching the replays. But again, if you want to participate in the chat, head over. If you don't, you can just hang out wherever you are. All right, um, let's go ahead and dive right into today's topic. It is a topic literally about making selections because selections in Photoshop is it's basically your key to success. The better you are at making selections, the better you will be at using Photoshop. It's just that simple. And selections, that we, with every new major version of Photoshop, we, we tend to come up with a new way to make selections because they're that important. And because no two images are the same, it, it just, you know, you'll use one method versus another method, or you might use a combination of methods depending on what it is you're trying to select. So I'm going to take you through the 10 selection methods you should know. I'm not saying that you should necessarily use, but you should know them um, because you never know when you might need to use them for a particular kind of selection you, you want to make. Some of them go back as far as Photoshop 1.0. Some of which, in some cases, I don't even use those selection methods much anymore, but I still, every now and then, might have to. And, of course, there are some that uh, we use every single day. So, let's dive in and take a look. I've got several images open on my desktop already. Um, and that's the other thing, too. Some images will be easier to select than others. Some will be, you know, piece of cake, one click. You can make a selection, you're done. Some will require a thought process like, okay, if I'm trying to select the car, that's one thing. If I'm trying to select the green in the car or lime green or whatever color that is, that's another thing. So it just depends on what you're trying to do that you might approach the selection, um, um, you might approach the selection differently. So I'm going to take you all the way back and then take you all the way up to current. And then you can use, you have this arsenal of selection tools at the end of the hour that you can use to do whatever it is you need to select. And I, I don't think I'm going to leave anything out, but you never know. All right. So let's start off with the, um, the old days of the, well, not even the old days. I still use the lasso quite a bit today. So you have multiple lasso tools. You have the lasso tool, polygonal lasso tool, and the magnetic lasso tool. So the lasso tool, as, as the name implies, it is for lassoing things. So when, I, when do I use this? I use this when the selection doesn't have to be perfect, meaning I'm just trying to select an area. I use it to also augment 
other selection methods. So, so if I use another selection method and it did not get what I needed, I might add on to that selection with the lasso or subtract from that selection with the lasso. So the lasso absolutely has its place. Like for example, I might want to get rid of this one little white cloud here. So I'll just lasso it. And then I could switch over to the patch tool, which by the way is also a lasso. And then I could just go ahead and patch that one little piece of cloud out. So the lasso absolutely has its purpose and I still use it to this day. And it's great for those kind of selections. But if I were trying to select the stop sign, um, I, could, I could try with my pen and try and do a steady selection around it, but guaranteed my selection will not be perfect, perfect, and I am kind of wasting my time. Yep, see, I'm already off. I'm kind of wasting my time trying to do it this way. So that's just not the best way to make that kind of selection. So lasso's great for what it's great for. It's not great for everything. Uh, now, there are other lasso tools. Like I mentioned, uh, if we go to the lasso flyout menu, there's the polygonal lasso tool. What this lasso tool is, is, is great for is making selections um, of objects that are made up of straight lines. So let's say I want to select the, the line, the, the street line in the road here, this white line. So I could click on the left-hand side here, or I'll just click somewhere on the left. And then I get this lasso oh, behind my head there. I click behind my head and I get this, uh, this lasso kind of um, sticky <laughs> stick to stuck to the bottom of my shoe selection. So I can come all the way over to the end and uh, just make sure I'm not too far up or down. Click again, go down a little bit, click again, and then come all the way under the line, all the way behind my head once again, and click, and click, and then you have to end it somewhere around where you click the first one, which that's going to be hard because I can't see it. Oh no, I can't see it. That's the other thing. Now you can, if you can find your starting point, you can double click and there you go. And it will um, make that selection for you. So if we zoom in, you'll see the selection I made in the road with that polygonal lasso tool. So is it perfect? Absolutely not. Because the lines in the street aren't perfect. They're not perfectly straight and perfectly because it was you know painted with a machine. So in that case, uh, the polygonal lasso tool is good what, for what it's good for. If you need to select something that's got straight edges, you can probably click your way around the thing with straight edges pretty easily and make a selection that way. Now that you've got that selection, you could, for example, because the other question people always may think about is why do I need to select things in the first place? Um, so while that's selected, I can do multiple things. I can paint into it and therefore it will not overspray. So it's like using masking tape. If you were painting a wall and you didn't want to paint the door, you might mask off the door or the hinges or whatever. So that way, if you're painting, nothing gets on the door. So in this case, making the selection of that line in the road, if I do anything inside that line, I'm only doing it inside the line. I can't overpaint or over clone or overdo anything outside the line. So that's what it's used for. Uh, now, the other thing uh, that's a part of selections, I just don't want to forget this, so I'm going to say it now, is that just because you select the thing that's, uh, you know what, I, I, I just remembered I have another image I'm going to show that on, so never mind. But anyway, so for example, if I now create a new layer and I now grab a paintbrush, and I now grab, uh, hold down the Option or Alt key, and I sample some of that green color, and I make my brush a little bigger. There we go. I can paint, I can paint lines, I'm just going up and down, and it's only painting inside that selected area. I could also hit Edit Fill and fill just that selected area. I could paint along that line and fill just that selected area. So I'm, I'm painting haphazardly all over the place, but the paint is only going in the selected area. So, uh, and because I created a new layer, I actually created that paint. Oh, I turned the layer off. I meant to deselect. I created that paint on the layer itself. So if I turn off that layer, you only see the paint inside the lines of that layer. Yes, it's Herbie. All right, so now here's another thing for beginners that uh, when we talk about making selections, we can't 
um, forget to tell people how to deselect. So you've got this selection, you did your painting, you've got your new layer, you're done. How do I get out of it? So we're used to in every other application we have from word processors on up, we're used to just clicking somewhere else. If you, if you click somewhere else, that deselects. Well, that doesn't always work in Photoshop. It would depend on what tool you're on. It would depend on a lot of things. So there's a so instead of thinking about I have to click somewhere else, you can deselect from the menu or from the keyboard, which is what the way I always do it from the keyboard. There is a deselect command. So if you go up to the select menu, there's a deselect command. On the Mac, that would be Command D. On PC, that would be Control D. Sometimes you might have something selected by accident or you left something selected somewhere else on the canvas, far outside, the, outside of your view. And you're trying to do something and you notice nothing's working because that thing's still selected way on the side. So let's say, for example, I scroll down and I now grab my same paintbrush on that new layer and I make a nice big brush and I'm trying to paint the sky. Notice that nothing's happening to the sky because the road is still selected. So I was like, wait a minute, how come I can't paint? How come it's not working? The first thing I always do now when something's not working is deselect. So Command D, now I can paint the sky because I deselected the road and I don't want to paint the sky. But anyway, so now I've got my, uh, <laughs> my yellow road where I miss spots and um, I could go in and fix those spots obviously. But you, you've got that on its own layer, and that's why we select. So we select to effect. That's what I used to teach people decades ago. We select to effect. So if you want to affect a certain area of the photo, you make a selection. Now, again, the lasso is, you know, this Photoshop 1.0. It was great back in the day, and it still is for certain things. Um, I just want to point out one more use of the lasso, and then we can leave the lasso alone for a minute. That is the, uh, you have the polygonal lasso, and then the last one is the magnetic lasso. So the magnetic lasso might work in the case where I'm trying to select this sign, the stop sign, I'm assuming that's a stop sign, whereas I click and it magnetically sticks to the edge. So as I'm dragging around, it's magnetic, even if I drag outside, like I'm, I'm a, a quarter inch away from it and it's still selecting the object that it sees. It sees contrast. So it's selecting around that sign and I'm gonna cut across the pole here to get to the other side. And when I click, yeah, that's not bad. It's not the end of the world. It was certainly much easier using the magnetic lasso than trying to use the regular lasso to do the same thing. So just um, you have the lassos when you need them. That's, that's my point of all of this. All right, so let me deselect and let me zoom back out. And now let's go in and talk about the, um, let's talk about the um, next tool, which is the, um, the magic wand, as some refer to in the chat, the tragic wand. The magic wand used to be good back in the day for what we needed it for, but you know, it's, it's, there are better ways to do things now. <laughs> so, so this is one tool I probably almost never use because it, it's, it's outlived its usefulness for me. I mean, in other words, I found other ways of making selections that I don't need the magic wand anymore. So I'm gonna show it to you so you get an idea of what it's for. You may run into a situation where you need it. So that's why we're arming you with all the tools so you can decide when you need something and when you don't. But anyway, the magic wand is based on select clicking and selecting something that's similar in color. It has a tolerance setting. The default for the tolerance setting is 32. You can change it from anywhere from one to, uh, I think, 100. And then you can set the, so one, it's very strict and the color has to be exactly the same. 100, it's very, you know, liberal. The color can be, you know, anywhere close to it and it will select. All right, so anyway, if I click on 32, which is the default, I click on this green door, that's what it selected because it decided, and by the way, the, um, the default is that the pixels have to be touching. So that green is in the back of the car in the front of the car, but it didn't grab the back of the car in the front of the car because there's a black line around the door. So it stopped at the line and said, oh, that color's not touching. So therefore I'm not gonna select the rest of the car. Now, luckily with all selection methods, you can add to your selection because otherwise you spend all day trying to click and get the right one and you're never gonna get it all in one click. So luckily with 
lasso, magic wand, and pretty much every selection method I'm going to show you going forward, you've got the ability to hold down your shift key to add to the selection. So if I hold down my shift key, you'll notice that when we zoom in, shift puts a plus sign on the bottom of the magic wand tool, letting me know we're adding. And while we're here, so I don't have to zoom in again, holding down the option key subtracts. So shift to add, option or alt key to subtract, no matter what selection method you're on. So if you drag a lasso around something and then you want to subtract out a part of it, you hold down your option or alt key and drag the little part that you don't want. And same thing, if you drug your lasso around something and you didn't get everything, you can hold down your shift key and go back and get the part you missed. So shift is add, option or alt is subtract, no matter what the selection tool is. So if I click, that adds in. If I click again, that adds in. If I click again, I can keep clicking. And this is what we used to have to do. Back in the day, we would just have to keep clicking or change the tolerance to add to the selection. Now, if I bump up the tolerance, let's say I bump up the tolerance to 50 instead of 32. Hold down the shift key and click, it grabs more. It gra In other words, it's saying, okay, I'm not gonna stress over the different color variances. I'm gonna grab more of that color. And you could eventually get all the green in the car and you would spend a lot of time doing this. And this is kind of why I just don't use the magic wand anymore because there are better ways to do it. But you could go in and select. Now, let me undo a couple of those. Let me undo a couple of those clicks. Undo, undo. Okay, I undid a few, so I don't have the top anymore. I don't have part of the bottom anymore because I want to point out <clears throat> that even if you get most of something selected, you get the ability to go in and add to the selection, but you don't have to use the tool to do it. So and it doesn't matter which tool. So if I go up to my select menu, you've got other ways to modify the selection. You've got two right here called grow and similar. So similar says, hey, you started selecting green. There's more green. Select similar colors. The problem is similar means, you know, hey, it thinks all this grass is green too. So start selecting that. It got all, you know, most of the car, but it also got most of everything else. So I can undo that and I could try grow. Now grow, the difference is, um, if I go to select and choose grow, grow just simply grows out from the selection. So grow would be what I would be trying to do here instead of similar. I would just keep hitting grow until it got it all. Uh, or, and, and of course I can keep using my shift key to add as well. So grow will help me get most of the car, if not all of it. Now it's, it's skipping this part down at the bottom because there's some grass in the front, but I think I pretty much got all the green. Now, why would you make a selection like this? Let me, let me grow one more time, see if this will help. I just wanna see a little bit of, uh... okay, I think that got what I wanted. All right, so um, why would you make a selection like this? Because you're trying to affect what you selected. So I selected based on color, most likely I'm trying to select the color to change it. That, that's, why I'm, that's why I'm trying to select the color versus the whole car. If I'm trying to select the whole car, that's a whole different story. All right, um, and so for example, Steve says, uh, or Bruce says, grow needs a quick key. Bruce, you've had editable keyboard shortcuts for years. Make it a quick key if you want grow to have a quick key. You can assign any keyboard shortcut to any function you want. All right, so anytime anyone screams, hey, it needs a, it needs a keyboard shortcut, I always remind them that you can go up to edit, come down to keyboard shortcuts, and you can make it whatever keyboard shortcut you want. But the problem is, the reason that it doesn't have one already is because all the good ones are taken. <laughs> so you're gonna either create a long convoluted one, command option shift plus G, you know, something like that, or you're gonna re replace something you don't use with the keyboard shortcut you want. All right, so anyway, so now that I've got that selected, I could go in and choose, uh, he, oh, sorry, I could make a mask, that's not what I was trying to do. I can go in and choose uh, hue and saturation adjustment, and it will create a new mask, and I could then go in and change the color of the car. So there is use for it. There's a reason why we make these kind of selections so that we can do things like this. So that way you can now, I've hey, I've quickly changed the color of that car. And the hood's a little missing still, but now that it's a mask, 
I could go in and just paint along the hood to get that little part that it missed. But that's pretty much why we select colors is because you want to do something to the color. Maybe you wanted to make another adjustment. You want to tone the color down. You want to desaturate it. Whatever it is, that's why we make the selections. All right, so we've gotten through lasso, which is number one. Magic wand, which is number two. We're going to move on to my next image so we can go to number three. Uh, suddenly Voodoo Valscar. We're going to go to number three, which I've got a couple of images here for when we need, when we use the marquee selection tools. So, uh, like for, and by the way, see this black part of the uh, soccer ball here? If I go into the, um, uh, just for a quick reference, if I go back to the polygonal lasso tool, it would be perfect for that. So I start up here in the corner, click, click. Oh, I missed part. Go back, click. Click, click, oh, it's round, oh no, then that's gonna make me have to do more clicks and it's not gonna be accurate. So this is what I mean by choosing the right tool for the right job, because that's actually rounder than it is straight. And then I get back to the, the part and it's selected. Okay, but I wouldn't use that because it's all one color and it's, it's isolated. So maybe I use the magic wand and just click one time. Hey, the magic wand worked perfectly for that. Because it's black, it's, it's all similar. I have the tolerance high enough and it's, and it's all isolated. So I selected that just with one click instead of me having to do the mag magnetic lasso or the polygonal lasso. So just remember that this is why you have multiple methods because you'll use the best one for whatever it is you're trying to do. All right, but that's not why we're here. While we're here, so what if I want to select the entire ball? Now you might think, and this is, our, this is our brain thinking, I want to select the ball. The ball is round. I remember there's a round marquee tool. There's an elliptical marquee. Great. It's for selecting round things. And I know I have to drag from a corner, which I don't really have a corner of this object. I have to drag from a corner in. Oops, I didn't quite do it just right. But luckily, when I let go, as long as I'm on a selection tool, I can move it. Oh, no, it's still not right. Deselect. Oh, maybe I remember this trick where if I do it from the center, holding down the option or alt key, and I can hold down the shift key to make a perfect circle. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Hang on. Scrolled by mistake. There we go. Deselect. Uh, option key, shift key. I get a perfect circle, but I wasn't right in the center, but no problem. I can pick it up and move it over and I can kind of get it that way and I can kind of do it this way. And yes, that will work eventually. And you'll notice now that the ball is not perfectly round because notice that on the edges here, it's, it's just, even though it's the right size circle, it's just not perfectly round. So you will end up spending time trying to tweak this to get it just right. And yeah, that will work, but you, there's just, you just will end up doing a lot of work. So what you might do instead is aim for something easier to select. Um, in this case, the background's pretty much all the same color. So if I grab a magic wand tool and I set the tolerance really low to like maybe two and I click, it selects the background because even though the ball is white as well, it's a different shade of white and setting the tolerance super low means it won't cross over that edge. That edge has got enough, enough contrast in it for it will. So it will not select the edge. Now you're saying, well, Terry, I don't want the background. I want the ball, the ball. Well, that's why this is the way we used to do it for years. Like every single time we would select something that was easier and then go up to our select menu and choose inverse which means toggle the selection and do the opposite. So instead of selecting the ball, or instead of selecting the ball, which was harder, the background was easier. Now, if I select inverse, I've got the ball. That's it. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to do anything. I got the ball. It's selected. Great. So just remember that when you open an image and you're trying to select something, the thing you're trying to select may not be the easiest. The thing you're not trying to select may be the easiest. And if you can inverse the selection, you're all set. You've got it. Okay, so that is the, um, the marquee tools are great when the shape is perfect, like perfect square, perfect rectangle, perfect oval, perfect ellipse, perfect circle. That's what the marquee tools are for. 
Um, or, you know, like if you can select what you need with those tools, that's what they're for. Uh, you've got even these single row and single column that I don't think anyone really uses much, but you've got these two, the rectangular marquee and the elliptical marquee. I don't use, yes, I know it's football, not soccer ball, but we're in the U.S., so it's a soccer ball. Guess what? Yeah, that's what I'm going to call it. Anyway, you've got um, the, well, I'm in the U.S., I should say. So it's a soccer ball as far as I'm concerned. It's a football everywhere else. What's the soccer ball here? Anyway, you've got the uh, rectangular marquee tool and the elliptical marquee tool. Holding down the shift key will make a perfect circle with either of those. Uh, not holding down the shift key will give you a, an ellipse or an oval or a, a rectangle or so forth and so on. So those tools are good when you need that kind of selection. Um, anyway, so now that I've got this, why would I make that selection? Well, maybe I want to... Um, maybe I want to mask out the background. So now I've masked out the background, making it transparent. So if I can put this ball in another image and it would just be the ball, I could copy it as it was selected and put it on its own layer on another image. I could remove the background if I wanted to. So lots of ways to do that. So that is your third selection tool, which is the marquee tools. Now let's go to number four. Um, these are not perfect shapes. They are different in contrast. This one's super dark. This one's uh, super light. This one's in between. So you start looking at if I want to if I want to select the queen here, um, or the king. I can't. No, that's the king. No, is that the king? Yeah, that's the king back there. This must be the queen. If I want to select the queen here. Um, what would be the best me best method? And you might uh, probably not magic wand. <laughs> probably not lasso. You could maybe get away with magnetic lasso. It's going to take you time. Uh, not the background in inverse because the background's complicated. So now that's as, this is an example of when we move on to another tool because none of those tools will work um, as, as effectively. You'll get it done, but it's, it's a matter of being effective. So next tool in our arsenal is the object selection tool. And by the way, um, I should I failed to mention this or even did I? Yeah, I failed to even include this in my... So I'm going to give you two tools here. I, I forgot about the quick selection tool. The quick selection tool is kind of the replacement to the magic wand. And, and for example, the quick selection tool is like a brush. So if I make my brush smaller using my left bracket key, I can start dragging and it will make a quick selection. Now, notice I said quick selection not accurate selection. So it's trying to guess what I'm trying to select based on where I'm dragging. And if I drag too far, then it's gonna say, oh, you must want the rest of this. Now, luckily you can hold down your option key and you can subtract. I can say, no, 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 I didn't really mean all of that. And you can click and you can say, you can eventually get it to be what you want. So no, 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 I don't want the, I don't want the square, I just want the piece. And that, that method, and not holding down the shift key will, or the option key will give you the rest. That method will get it done as well. So quick select is what I would use hands down over magic wand. Like I, like I said, I don't use magic wand ever, like anymore. I can't remember the last time I used it for something. Um, but quick select I use all the time. So quick select is that kind of modern day magic wand that's not based on color, it's based on an object and it learns based on how you click uh, around in the object to do a better selection. Okay, deselect. Now let's go in and uh, use the other tool which was officially number four. So number four is gonna be two tools, it's gonna be 4A and 4B. So 4A was the quick select, 4B, which was the tool I really intended to show, is the object selection tool which is brand new as of last year. So the object selection tool has two methods. It has a rectangle and it has a lasso. Now you might be asking, well, why would you need one versus the other? You see how the rook is behind the, the queen here? If, if the, in other words, if the tool's getting confused because the two objects are kind of overlapping, then I might use the lasso to kind of just loosely work my way around and it will make that selection. But here's how the tool works. It's like um, select subject, which we haven't seen yet, based on the tool. So if I drag a rectangle around this chess piece, even if I don't get it all, it's smart enough to kind of say, oh, you're trying to get all of, you're trying to get this piece, I got it. And even if it missed part, no problem, shift key, 
and grab the part it missed. Shift key, grab the part it missed. Until you get it all. And it, it's just, <laughs> it's being very stubborn here. Uh, normally it will not be this stubborn. Normally it will do it quickly. But that's way faster than anything else I've shown. And if the tool is, if the object is isolated, like this uh, bishop here, then uh, making that selection is a lot easier. Now, I cheated by trying to not select the, the rook behind it. So that's where I meant uh, that I would use the lasso instead. So if I use the lasso, and I just, I'm not even trying to be close. I'm just working my way around telling it, this is what I want but not selecting that rook, then it pretty much gets it. Still, this part down at the bottom is kind of shadowy, so it doesn't quite know. But two clicks, two, two selections, I pretty much got all of it. And <laughs> you can hold down the option or alt key as well to tell it to subtract or to add. And that part's just being stubborn. Okay, so object selection tool, quick, select, uh, quick selection tool, um, as the names imply. So the object selection tool is based on trying to select an object like this bishop, this bishop, and yeah, I could hold down the shift key and get them both, but I'm just showing you, even in this case where it's in the shadows like this, not, you know, not horrible. You can, can barely see it. I can barely see it. So if I want this, um, so see, in that case, it, it can't tell the space in between what it should do. Hold down the option key to subtract. No, I don't want that. No, I don't want that. And I'm not having to even try and be close and it's doing a good job of, of eliminating the stuff I don't need. Okay, so you can quickly and easily get objects selected with the object selection tool and quick select. So if I go to this one, um, same thing. I've got the object selection tool. I want to select this story thingy here. Done. I want to select this pit. Done. I want to select this cheese. Done. This is why I don't use those old tools anymore. Because these methods are so much faster and so much easier and so much more accurate than the frustrations of the old day magic wand tool or even the marquee tools anymore. So it's just so much faster using these new methods. Uh, this one over here, again, lasso around it. It's like, it's like artificial intelligence on a tool. So it's using select subject on a tool. So it's just quickly letting me get to those things. All right, so that's the object selection tool and that was number four for A and for B. This next one was introduced a few years back, and it's kind of interesting because it's based on what we as photographers call depth of field. So you've got these beautiful birds on a branch or on a piece of wood, I, don't know, I guess that's a branch, yeah, the branch, um, and it's got a nice, definitely shallow depth of field bokeh effect in the background. Photoshop can select based on that. So I can say, I can select things that are based, that are in focus, in other words. So if it's in focus, it can make a selection. How do we get to that selection? So if we go to select menu and we choose focus area, it will calculate and show you what it's going to do. And it's doing it on white, but I can do it on black. I can do it on transparency. I'm just, this is just previews to show me what I would get based on the focus. There was no faster way to do that. I'm sorry, not even select subject would have gotten that as fast because select subject will have to decide what's the subject. Is it just the birds? Is it the branch? Is it both? Whereas the focus area doesn't, it's not trying to select based on a subject, it's selecting simply what's in focus. Um, so in that case, I've now click OK, and it's gave it, giving me my selection of everything that was in focus, except that one little piece of the bird right there. So I could just simply grab my regular lasso and shift and add that one little piece in. No problem. And I can look around, make sure I'm not missing anything else important. And now I can hit Command J for uh, copy to a new layer. And now that's on its own layer all by itself to do whatever I want behind it. So if I want to put this car scene behind it, now the car scene's behind it. 
So um, you've got just these amazing selection methods depending on what it is you need to select. So uh, a couple of people are saying, hey, I never tried that one, never knew that one existed. Focus area, yay, blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, Jan and, and Nicholas, or, and Nicholas uh, now have new things to go play with. Now, again, it's all based on how good it can detect the focus. If the focus is kind of in between, like, the, the subject's in focus, but the background's kind of in focus too, then it's not going to do as good. Because uh, again, it's focus area. Now, just to remind you here, let's, um, let's turn these two layers off. Go back to the original. Uh, when I bring up focus area, is there is a slider. So it, it did, it, I have it set to auto. But if your area is... If your image is not being selected properly, try adjusting the slider to get more of the image or less of the image based on what's really in focus. So auto says, I'm going to try and do it for you, but if you want to do it manually, you can turn off auto and slide the slider all day long. And you've got some advanced options as well um, to um, maybe the maybe it's noisy in the foreground or background. You can reduce the noise based on that. You can output it to a new selection or a new layer with a mask, which is what I would really want. And you can even go straight from here into selected mask if you were trying to select something that had hair and it wasn't doing a great job of that, which, were, which that's coming up, by the way. So now I've just told it to go ahead and create a new layer with a mask instead of outputting to a selection, and that's exactly what it did. So I've got the original layer and a new layer with that mask and I can take that new layer with a mask and drag it up over my, um, my car layer, and boom, there it is. All right, uh, next up, that was number five. Let's get to number six. No, that's number five. I am missing number six. This should be number six. I didn't open it yet. Ah, there we go. Okay, number six. Someone sent me, if it wasn't this photo, it was one like it. And she said, I am struggling. I've been trying to do this for, for days, trying to select the, the um, whatever these things are, these little purple things, so that I can do something to them, change their color, whatever. And, and I just, I'm, I'm, I'm not able to select them properly. It's just giving me all kinds of issues. And I looked at that and I said, well, first of all, she just wanted to change the color. So I showed her a different method to just change the color of those things. But let's say you did need to select them, which is why I'm glad I, I still have this example. All right, so if I still needed to select them, then, um, yeah, somebody said, oh boy, <laughs> this is, this, is a this would be challenging. But luckily, um, selection method number six there's a way to do this and it's under the select menu and it's called color range because when i when i open up an image like this and i i see the challenge at hand the first question i ask myself is is the thing i'm trying to select unique to the rest of the scene and yes all these purple and blue things are unique to the scene because the grass leaves and flowers aren't purple and blue if the grass or the flowers were purple and I didn't need the flowers, that would make it more challenging, absolutely. But since these are the only things that are these colors, that makes it a lot easier. All right, so select menu, color range, and that brings up this little tiny screen because it's an old, <laughs> I always remind people, when you see a little tiny dialog box like this and a little tiny preview, that means it's old because all of the newer filters and newer dialog boxes are full screen, like they're the size of your, of your monitor. But when it's old like this, it's, they haven't gone back and redone this one to make it bigger, um, so you have to deal with this little bitty screen. All right, so color range is just as the name implies. It selects based on a color, and you get these eyedroppers uh, down here where you can go and tell it what color you're looking for. So I, I'm on the main eyedropper here, and I can say, hey, I'm looking for this purple. And then you'll see what the, the mask kind of quickly changed to show me, oh, that the, is that the purple you want? Now, if I were to say yes and click OK, guess what? It's not going to be all of it. Because I can tell there are pieces missing even in this foreground image. There's too much black there. In other words, there should be more white to show me that I'm getting more of that particular object. So luckily, 
just like we've been using plus and minus, um, adding and subtracting, there's an add eyedropper. So I can say, no, 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 you're not getting it all. It should be more like that. It should be more like this. It should be more like this. So I'm going around and just adding all these different variances of these colors uh, that I can click on here. And, and because some of them are dark, some of them are light. Uh, and now you see how that's lit up now? That's mean, that means I'm gonna get way more of it selected than I would have if I'd have just clicked okay. Now, in addition to adding to the, to, the, to the selection, you've got this fuzziness slider. So when you drag the fuzziness slider over to the right, you're telling it to get more of it. When you drag it, <laughs> that's too much. So what start, when the sky, or not the sky, the background starts to light up, I know it's too much because that's selecting now green. And so I need to pull back to where the background goes black again. And now I have no, in, in other words, I would pull up as, as like one notch before the grass turns white and or the background turns white and then pull back. Because that's saying, okay, you've got as much of this as you're gonna get based on the color range of the things you sampled. I, also known as color range, yes. All right, so I click okay. And it made that selection for me. Now, it may not have made all of it like for example i see the bottom of this one it didn't do i see on this one it didn't do i see uh but it got a lot of it it got most of it but you remember the things i showed you earlier select similar and grow so if i say select similar oh wait that starts to get more of it and this dark shadow area under here and under here i'm not going to worry about because that's really like too dark to be concerned with but if it wasn't i could go in and add those parts to the selection so for example, I, I'm on the lasso, I can hold down my shift key and just lasso that part in if I needed it. So now that I've got that selected, I could then go into the same hue and saturation adjustment layer that we were in a minute ago or several images ago. It will create a new layer with a mask and then I can go in and change the color of those things that were selected. And if it didn't, if I see something that it missed, like over here now, it kind of missed parts of this one over here on the right hand side, uh, I can increase the saturation. I could then go to the mask and I could go into my paintbrush. <laughs> nice big giant paintbrush. I can go into the paintbrush and I can choose um, white. And I can go ahead. Oh, that's just not going to, that's not the color anyway. Oh, but anyway, it would add that color in and make that selection. So it did do it. That's just not the same color. But you can add or subtract from that mask using that method. And because we did it as a hue and saturation adjustment layer, you can always get back in and change the colors to your heart's content um, non destructively because you're, you created that as a layer. Uh, Okay, so um, John's asking a question that's dealing with um, softening or hardening the edges of the selection after you make it. So let, let me get to that in just a moment. All right, uh, all right, so that's selecting color range. Let's go back. Let me see if I, uh, I don't wanna do that one yet. Let's go back. All right, let, let's, let's go back to this. And let's go back to the original. And remember we did focus area, select focus area. But this time I don't want to output it to a new layer. I want to actually output it back to a, just a selection. So in other words, when I click OK, the background will still be there. It will just make a selection. Now that is, for all intents and purposes, a hard edge selection, which works for this. That's not a problem. But if the feathers are being selected too too sharp, like the edges are too sharp. Before, John, before you do anything else to copy it into a new layer or do anything, that's when you would do your feathering. So under your select menu, under modify, you've got this command called feather. And what feather does is it says, by, and again, there's no magic number. It will depend on the resolution of your image. So low resolution images, you want a lower number. Higher resolution images, you're probably gonna need a higher number. There's just no way to know. Um, but you're, you're gonna guess at a number, whatever that number is, and that's gonna soften the entire selection based on that number. So these birds probably could be a little softer, but the branch shouldn't be soft. 
So doing it this way is, is one way to do it. The other way that someone mentioned I saw in the chat a minute ago. So by the way, if I do uh, five pixels, it's probably not gonna make a big difference, but it will soften the edges all the way around that selection by five pixels. So they won't be as hard. The other way to do it is remember we had the mask here. Let's turn this one off for a second. Let's deselect and let's go to the mask and let's, uh, there we go. You have this mask, you could blur the mask. You could um, use a paintbrush along the edge of the mask to soften it just on the birds or just on the feathers. That way you don't get it on the branch. Um, you, you, so there's lots of ways to soften up the edges of a selection using feathering or the mask um, outside of just um, doing the whole image. So in this case, I would do the mask and just do the feathers. So I would come around this edge and maybe use, even use the blur tool and blur the edge of those feathers just so it softens that selection just a bit. But you get what you get. So if you soften the selection and it starts to bring in part of the background, then you're gonna have to deal with that too. All right, um, all right, moving on. So that was color range. All right, now we're gonna get to this one. So um, I would say my absolute favorite method of selecting objects or people is select subjects. So for example, let's do a composite. I've got this background and I'm gonna bring over my subject. And she's very excited that I picked her. You can tell by her expression. And she's got this, uh, she's got hair. <laughs> and that's that's becomes one of the number one issues that we've had to deal with for years in making these selections is people with hair, people with flowing hair, fuzzy hair, you know, uh, hair, basically. If it's, if it's just a guy with short hair, it's easy. If it, or a person with short hair, it's easy. If it's long hair, it's not as easy. So uh, luckily, these methods have gotten a lot better over the years as well. So for example, the uh, select menu has something called select subject. So if I choose select subject, what that says is I'm going to, on the layer you're on, I'm going to figure out what I think is the subject of the photo. So unlike focus area where it's just based on what's in focus, this is using artificial intelligence and machine learning to figure out what it thinks is the subject. And luckily, over the last couple of versions of this, it's gotten a lot better at portraits, people with hair. So that doesn't mean the selection is perfect by any means. Like I can still see strands of hair that didn't get selected. I can see yellow in here that's probably gonna still be there. But it did a way better job than it would have done two or three years ago where it just would have been a solid outline around the person. Like not, not even attempting to do the hair at all. All right, so anyway, it got, it got uh, a lot of the hair. So select subject is number seven. Just quickly selecting the subject, good or bad. So in this case, okay, not great, not bad. It's okay. Now, to make it better, we go to selection method number eight which is the next option under select and or under select subject, actually next two options, select and mask. So the select and mask workspace, notice how it's a big full window. It's not a tiny little square because <laughs> it's new. Anyway, uh, the select and mask workspace takes you into this workspace so you can refine your selection. So it's showing me, it's just showing me a preview. You can look, make a preview, whatever you want. You see the mask, which again, that's just from select subject without me doing anything. That's way better than it used to be. Um, you have uh, show it to me on black, which there's a slider, so you can choose. So I, now this is showing me and illustrating the problem is that while the edges look really good, the yellow is interspersed in her hair. And so that's where the problem comes in with selecting subjects like this. And people always say, oh, she was on a solid background. That was easy. No, it's not. <laughs> not if they have hair. Because whatever color that solid background was is going to be in the hair. And yellow and green are the worst because those colors actually reflect onto the subject as well. So if you're looking for photographing something easy to cut out, easier, Use gray, use a gray background, not white. White's just as bad, gonna reflect onto the subject. Yellow, green, green screen, all of those are horrible. Use gray. Gray will be your best ally if you're photographing something with the intent of cutting it out and putting it on something else. All right, anyway, now that we're here, we're gonna um, do some Photoshop magic here to uh, decontaminate colors. 
So that gets rid of a lot of it right off the bat. And decontaminate colors has a slider. It used to not. It used to just be all or nothing. And now you can slide it back to what you need it to. Now that's step one. Step two is you have this refine edge brush tool, which is um, which is refine edge brush tool, which is selected by default. So what this tool is designed for, and you you usually don't want to make the brush any bigger than you need it. Uh, you you it you tell it what you tell it what to subtract from the subject by clicking where the background used to be. So I'm going to start out here away from the hair where the background used to be yellow. And then I'm going to start painting. And it looks like, hey, Terry, that's making it worse. Don't worry. It's just showing me where that color is. So that's why it lit up yellow, saying, hey, you want this color? I'm going to show it to you. That color's all over the place. It's all here. Now when I let go, it recalculates. So come over here. I missed some spots. There we go. Much, much better. Okay, so now if I go back to the um, show me the preview with the uh, show it to me on layers, which is the background, that's not bad at all. I could keep working, keep painting, but we don't have time. And now I want to output this as a new layer. Sorry, decontaminate colors. I want to output this as a new layer with a mask. Click OK. That gives me my new layer with a mask, turns off the original layer. So the original layer is still there, turns off that layer. And you're probably thinking, well, is that really good? Let's try it. Let's put it, put another image in there. Let's take this Detroit skyline image and drop that in, in, in its place. And grow that image. And away we go. So with two seconds of work compared to hours of work before that's a great place to begin now, i could have gone in and painted some more around here maybe done a little bit more work over here but i can always double click on the mask and get right back into selecting mask so i'm right back into it if i miss spots i can double click on the mask and keep working okay moving on because i only got a few minutes left all right so um if you ever were afraid of selecting somebody with hair that job has gotten way easier and, and she's, look at how shocked she is. That job's gotten way easier in Photoshop in current versions. All right, so that was number eight, selected mask. I'm going to turn off this image just for a second. No, I'm not. I'm going to go back to the soccer ball, the football, the other sport thing. <laughs> I'm going to go back to that for a second. And, yep, that one. I'm gonna go back to this image for a second and let's uh, let's revert it. Let's get rid of that mask. I just wanna show you an old, old method um, that we used to use as well. So for example, let's say you did try, let's say the background wasn't as easy to select and you did try and use a marquee and you did try and get it just right. And it's not just right. I, I was way off as a matter of fact. Anyway, you kind of get it close and you say, oh man, that edge is off a little and that edge is off a little. You can go into a mode that goes all the way back to Photoshop 1.0 called quick mask mode. And that's number nine, hitting the letter Q while you have a selection or while you don't have a selection, doesn't matter. Hitting the letter Q will turn your layer red to remind you and you're in quick mask mode because we, we got calls and tech support saying, hey, what, what happened? Why is my image red? <laughs> so that's why, because you hit Q by mistake. And that will put you in a mask that didn't get generated as a layer as a mask. So now I could go in with a brush and with black or white paint, depending on what I'm trying to do. So in this case, I, and I'm just going to do it quickly and sloppily, but I could go in and say, oh, you know what? I want to mask off that edge a little bit more. So quick mask mode goes back to pretty much the Photoshop 1.0 days. Or not 1.0, but certainly 2.0 and 3.0. All right, and if you switch the color, you're telling it to add that, uh, that color back in, that part of the image back in. So quick mask is a great way to be creative when you want to paint in a selection for, and you don't, you didn't generate a layer with a mask, you just want to do it quickly. And whatever you do, as soon as you 
are finished and you click Q or you tap Q again, that becomes your new selection. So if I tap Q and I come over here and I do this and I sign my name or my initials, that becomes a selection. So it's a way to go along an object or inside of an object um, with a paintbrush. So quick mask is the letter Q, that's number nine. All right, last but not least, because I'm out of time, let's quickly, quickly, quickly get to, back to that Detroit skyline here. And um, actually that's not the image I want. Let's go into, did I not open that one too? Hang on, let's go to this one. I want to select that sky. Oh my God, this is a nightmare because it's the sky and the sky is hard. Under the select menu, you, you've got sky now. You had edit, replace sky, you still do, but you've got select sky so that you can select the sky. It figures out what the sky is between all those ropes and beams and everything. And now I can hit command J, put that sky on its own layer. I could then go in and use whatever method I want to adjust that sky. And that sky gets adjusted without anything else being selected. So don't forget about Select Sky. And folks, that is my time. I'm out of time and I did my 10 methods. So Select Sky. And cheers, everyone. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one, which is next week. And stay tuned for the Photoshop Daily Crib Challenge. Bye, everybody.